For the time being, let's shift focus to KEI Industries. The stock, remember, has more than doubled in the past year. In a no recent note coming in from Axis Capital, they've initiated coverage with a buy rating. Their target price is at around 4,100 rupees. The brokerage house expects margins to expand by improving product and channel mix. To discuss how the trends are emerging, well, we have Mr. Anil Gupta, the CMD of the company. Hi, Mr. Gupta. Good morning and uh, good to see you in as always. First up, let's talk about, uh, you know, this margin picture and also this commodity price spike that we have seen. Now, commodity prices have moved up. For you, I think it's more or less a pass-through. So, two-part question. Are dealers stacking up ahead of any kind of price increases, which in turn will help the near-term sales, point number one? And is there a risk to that 11% margin guidance that you have given for FI25? Yeah, good morning uh, to you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, your first question is that whether dealers are stacking up for uh, quick sales, uh, yeah, to a very small extent, because uh, the the way the prices have moved up, they are also uh, you know scared that how much they can invest and how much risk they can take. Of course, 15, 20 percent extra they have bought uh, for the time being, but uh, I don't think that it is uh, ramping up too much. So your second question is how it is going to impact our margins. I've been saying in the in last two, three years, when the copper prices were similar in nature in 2021, uh, that we are having adequate stocks of uh, metal as well as our booking to take care of the present order booking. Similarly, for retail, we are immediately uh, you know, reviewing our price list and passing off the uh, impact. For institutional B2B selling also, we are, we are immediately, uh, you know, increasing the prices for the new offers. For the existing orders, we definitely, um, you know, honor it. And uh, for that, we have sufficient stocks available with us. So, Mr. Gupta, you see then no risk to that 11% margin guidance. Going by what you're saying, you have stock, you'll push through some price increases to where it's required. And you're fairly, you know, sounding fairly optimistic about it. So, 11% is doable, right? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gupta, hi, good morning, uh, uh, Prashant here. I mean, you know, uh, just to kind of, one more, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pass-through. So, you, uh, prices go up, I mean, uh, the value chain, down the value chain that uh, goes through. But if prices, I mean, there are some forecasts, and of course, these are just forecasts, which call for a sustained increases in pricing, uh, prices, uh, almost a secular kind of a rise. Not, of course, without speed bumps, but uh, uh, do you foresee that kind of a, a situation? You'd have an idea about that as well? Prashant, we don't take any risk on the metals. So we okay. keep on buying or booking our metals based on our order booking. So hmm. if it even if it goes up uh, substantially, uh, it will not impact our business on margins. Uh, so and we don't want to take any profiteering out of uh, you know this uh, uh, metal speculation. Okay, okay. D do you do you reckon uh, at, at, at some level it starts to hurt demand or not really? Yeah, suppose if suddenly the LME goes up beyond ten thousand dollar or eleven thousand, maybe there may be some pause for for new orders for for the time being, maybe for a month or so. But the the companies or EPC contractors who have booked the taken the orders, they will have to buy because uh, they have to complete their projects in in a time time bound manner to avoid liquidated damages or penalties. Hmm. Uh, sir, talking specifically about one of your segments, that's EHV, electric high voltage. I'm reading a note uh, from Ilara Capital, which came out you know, a few months back, where they're saying that the company is currently facing a capacity shortage for EHV, due to which revenues may peak at 600 crore rupees. You have a greenfield project coming up at Sanand in Gujarat, but that's going to take some time. I think the full completion is only about 24 months away. Um, so, can you talk about this incremental capacity? Uh, is it true that your EHV cable revenues will peak at 600 crore for the next two years? And when does that new capacity come on stream? And what will be the revenue addition post that? Um, yes, it is It is peaking up. But by doing some bit bottlenecking and efficiency improvements, productivity improvement, we can maximum take it up to uh, 700 crore. And the new capacity will definitely come up uh, in 18 to 24 months from now. 
uh, and uh, uh, I don't want to predict on the upside of, uh, due in the new project that how much capacity we have already uh, factored some of the capacity when we are building the project, but it will be too premature to comment on. Okay, all right. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Gupta, I also you know since we're talking about capacity expansion, there were two big capacities, right, that were coming on stream. One was at Silvasa, which was expected to be up and running by the end of the last fiscal, uh, I mean, quarter four, I think, of FY24. Has that happened? Point number one, I think at optimum levels, you could generate around 800 crores of revenues. And the second one was at Rajasthan, which was expected in the first quarter of FY25. That as well, I think, uh, you know, I put around 110 crores or and you're expecting around 800 crores at full, uh, at optimum levels. Both these two on track? Yes, both are on track. Uh, Silvasa capacity is already up on stream now and uh, have come into the commercial production from, uh, I mean, uh, first week of April. And so far as uh, Bhivadi Patredi is concerned, uh, that that is on track and will be, uh, you know, running on stream by end of June. Okay, all right. So both those two then on track and at optimal levels between these two, you can uh, generate close to around 1,600 crores of revenues, right? Yes. And for this year, how much will it be? Will it operate at, I mean, what kind of levels? 50, 60, 70%? What is it? Uh, Silvasa, I expect that it, it should operate on uh, 70 to 80% level. But uh, okay. Bhivadi, uh, it will ramp up by 50%. And, uh, okay. uh, you know, as expected, we, we, uh, we will be, uh, you know, uh, likely to grow as uh, projected by in my earlier statements uh, in this financial year as well. Okay, and the earlier statement that you had given us was, I think, you're expecting to grow by 15 to 16%. So Better. that takes into account this additional capacity and just going by the numbers you're given, around 1,000, 1,050 crores will come in from both these two capacities. Are we getting that correct? Yes. All right, just, right. one more question, just one more question on exports. You know, there's a big scope out there. You're in early teens as a contribution, expected to go to 20% as you told us in the past. But because of this entire Red Sea crisis, you know, there is some uh, problem in terms of freight, in terms of availability of ships. Have exports got hit in the past quarter or was it business as usual? No, no, it, it is business as usual. There is, there is no hit to the exports, except that a little bit of freight cost has gone up due to this and... Uh, Transit time has gone up by seven to 10 days. Beyond that, there is no impact on our exports. And uh, we expect that exports are likely to be uh, to grow substantially in this financial year compared to last year. Uh, again, a slightly near term question, Mr. Gupta. We are in election season here in India, and this is a long one, right? Uh, April 19th all the way to early June. Uh, do you uh, do, do you expect uh, you know Q1 to show the impact of that in some way at the margin? No, I don't see any impact on the on the business performance or the margins. We have adequate orders, and uh, the EPC contractors who are already executing the contracts, they they have to place orders and they are taking deliveries. So I don't think that there will be any impact on, on, of this election on our business performance. For the full year, uh, then, uh, just to kind of wrap the wrap this up, for FI25, uh, revenues are expected to grow between 15 and 16 percent, Mr. Gupta? Yeah, <laughs> this is this just, I just said yes. uh, a few okay. minutes back. All right, fair enough. Uh, Mr. Gupta, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through all of that detail. It's always a pleasure, sir, uh, speaking with you there. So that's uh, KEI. I mean, uh, it's done extremely well. Uh, in terms of uh, both the business and, of course, share price performance as well.